Hello everybody, Dark Ninja here. Today we're going to be looking at the crew skills that were introduced in this new patch. The new crew skills and changes to old crew skills, how it works, some tips and tricks, my general thoughts about uh, crew skills in general, which ones are good, which ones are bad, and on which kind of tanks. And this uh, guide is going to be pretty in-depth, probably more in-depth than most other content creators. So <clears throat> if you appreciate this kind of content, then please give it a like and a comment to boost it in the algorithm. Now, let's get started with um, some first general tips for this patch. So when you load into the game, there's going to be a button in the barracks that you should know about. It's this button here. Reset perks for all crews. Um, and you can do this for free. And it will also have a clock for 30 days. You can freely reset crew skills for 30 days um, after you first log into the game. So after this patch. So when you log in, you have 30 days to change your crew skills around all you want. Now after those 30 days end, you still get a one-time one time free crew reset for each crew. So if after the 30 days you change your mind about your, some perks on a certain crew, then you can always change it then. So don't be too worried that you have to get all your crew skills right right away. So let's start off with just giving a particular tank in, as an example. Let's use the bat chat and I'll just talk, go through all the crews, crew skills and generally talk about which ones are good and which ones are bad and why. So the it, and pay attention to the order that I pick these as well. This is gen I picked them in order generally of ones that I find better and worse. Now this is tank tank specific to the bat chat, so don't pick these crew skills for all tanks. But um, in general, um, I'll show you my setups on a couple different tanks, some heavy tanks and a light tank as well, just so you can get an idea of which crew skills are good on different tank classes. But for the bat chat, let's uh. Let's start with the most basic crew skill that you should have for all your crew members. Brothers in Arms is probably the most important crew member you, crew skill you can have on any tank. Or on, in any... Yeah, for all tanks you want Brothers in Arms as basically your first usually. Um, you might want this one as first on something like a mouse because this is a new crew skill. Um, for five sec 15 seconds after you receive damage you get a 5% bonus to your crew skill, which will effectively reduce your reload by around, I think, 1.1%. Uh, so that's a really solid crew skill, and that's this is probably the second best crew skill that, um, now. This might be the single-handedly the biggest. If you could pick one crew skill on your tank, I would probably pick this one, because for Brothers in Arms, your whole crew has to have it. For this one, um, it's just one slot and it's extremely powerful. So I would definitely pick this on pretty much all tanks besides, yeah, probably all tanks, even light tanks, maybe not artillery, but recon is the same as before, 2% extra to your V range. Um, I think that's probably the second or third best skill. Um, maybe, maybe repairs is before that. Um, so yeah, as before, concealment and repairs are unchanged. Um, so I pick both of these on the bat chat. Now one thing, one interesting thing I should know about concealment and repairs, mostly about repairs. Concealment, you still want to pick this basically for medium tanks that have, have high camo or decent camo. All light tanks should have this, but heavy tanks, you're no longer going to be picking concealment at all, ever. Because they're just better options. For repairs, usually what I would do is look under the survivability tab. And right here it says your suspension repair time. Repairs is most influential when it comes to repairing your tracks. So check your tank's um, suspension repair time. And you want to get it below 5 seconds usually. So on the bad chat, I take repairs on my whole crew. Um, but sometimes it could be worth it to... Actually, I don't have it on my... Uh, on, my uh, on this remember some tanks have such great repair times that you th i think you can get away with having with not running repairs on one of your crew members if it really needs another perk so for example on the back chat i chose repairs on my commander and my driver because i think they had better skills than the gunner did or sorry they have worse skills than the, what the gunner did i think the commander skills are probably the weakest towards the fifth and sixth skill and so usually if you're going to be um, dropping repairs on one of your crew members, you're going to be picking repairs on your commander 
and then some others and then dropping it on for example the gunner is usually a good one so let's go back to the commander uh, let's talk about this new crew skill practicality reduces your repair kit and med kit cooldown time by 10 percent med kits and repair kits were changed in this patch so that small kits take 90 seconds for their cooldown and lit in big kits which is what they were before and big kits now got a buff so that's only 60 seconds also to no one thing to note is that small and large small kits now work just like big kits used to where they repair your whole crew if two crew members are knocked out or all your modules if if more than one module is knocked out like you, there's gonna, there's no such thing as getting uh racked and tracked in the same shot and not being able to repair it anymore which is a really nice change um okay so um mentor was changed so that now it gives you a 20 percent extra xp to your other crew members which is pretty nice but it also has this second effect where it, it for replacing knocked out crew members, um, it works like um, Jack of all trades used to. Um, so I think this is a huge buff for this skill, and this skill is now a lot more useful, especially when you're training a crew. There's a very good justification for bringing this as like maybe your fourth skill, especially if you have a large crew. So definitely something I would uh, watch out for. Now this this crew this crew is maxed, and I'm still taking mentor because I think this skill is in general probably better than practicality. I wouldn't pick practicality on most tanks unless maybe it's a heavy tank. Um, and we'll get to that later with the mouse. And sound detection now has an additional effect where it negates the effect of stun by 10%, but it works otherwise the same as before. Um. I wouldn't consider it, it's kind of a hard choice, but I wouldn't probably take sound detection on most tanks anymore. The only tanks I would really um, say could maybe benefit from it are tanks that are fast enough to get out of the way of the arty shot, so it would have to be a fast medium tank in my opinion, or maybe a light tank. Um, and even then I still don't think I would usually take it because these, this one here and Mentor are, are good ones. So in general, I think the commander perks are the most straightforward out of all the crew members. Um, you pick you pick these four, these four as your as ones that you always pick. And then if your tank benefits from camo, you 100% pick camo. If it doesn't, then you don't. Like if it's on a heavy tank. And then the last one or two choices um, are usually going to be. Um, I would usually pick Mentor as one of the next ones, whether it's a tank that doesn't need concealment or not. So for tanks with concealment, I would just pick these top six, usually. Um, and for tanks that do not have concealment, like heavy tanks, you pick these five. And then you probably either pick Practicality if you think you're going to be getting stunned by Arty a lot. So like on a mouse, I would pick Practicality as my last one. Or you could pick um, you could pick Coordination. I haven't tested this one a ton, so I'm not entirely sure how strong it is, but I could see this one being useful on potentially light tanks if you dropped a Mentor for it. Sound Detection I think is probably pretty weak now, and it's probably the one I'm going to pick the least. So that's the Commander. Let's go over a Radio Operator. Situational awareness is the same as before. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. I don't think I did. Yeah, I didn't I didn't miss anything. I explained everything. Alright, so radio operator. By the way, the where the way it works now, um if your crew member only has one role, it can only get up to six perks. If your crew member has two roles, it gets six perks for its main role, commander, and then its second role gets three perks from that from those skills, so it gets three radio operator perks. Um, and the reason why it's only three and not six is because you don't have to pick repairs or concealment because getting repairs and concealment on your commander and your on these three crew members for just one of their roles is good enough to it'll be like having it for all all um all it's like you have it on your whole crew basically. So they don't have those two. So that explains two of them. And the, and the third perk that is removed is firefighting. So if you look over here on the gunner, 
there is no firefighting option here and there's no firefighting option for the loader that's because firefighting is now just one perk that you pick and that makes it way stronger so this is firefighting used to have it on your whole crew now it's just one crew member the radio operator who gets it and it will have the same effect as if you had it on your whole crew so that makes it very strong but it's up against some good competition here so situational awareness gives three percent extra v range just like before um that one for me is always going to be my first pick on every tank now these other other ones are all potentially helpful and i think the radio operator skills are arguably the hardest ones to pick through so we've got a new one side by side increases crew efficiency bonus by 2.5 percent at distances of less than 50 meters away from an allied vehicle of the same type so if you're in a medium tank and your allied medium tank is 50 meters or less from you you'll get a 2.5 percent better um better um crew bonus by the way that will give you a 1.1 percent better reload and i misspoke when i said emergency gives 1.1 percent it gives 2.2 percent better reload i think could be wrong about that you guys can fact check me um either way pretty solid um i think it's 2.2 percent after you get shot which is pretty big so yeah that makes that even stronger than i thought it was um let's go back to the radio operator I just explained side by side a new one called jamming decreases the time your vehicle remains spotted by one second now skill for LTU and his video kind of brushed over this and thought it wouldn't make a big difference but in my experience actually testing it on a test server and playing with tanks using jamming so far on the live server I think jamming is very good I think it's a very strong skill especially for tanks that are playing in bushes very often so this one I think is essential for light tanks. You have to have this skill on light tanks. Um, I think it's much better than signal inter interception because signal interception, which is also a new skill, decreases the time that your sixth sense will go off by 0.75 seconds. So usually it takes your sixth sense to take takes your sixth sense three seconds to pop up on your screen after you get spotted. This will make it 2.25 seconds instead, so you know you're spotted sooner. That sounds like these two might be kind of comparable, but in my experience, you usually know when you're... If you're an inexperienced player anyways, um, you usually know when you're going to get lit because you're either like firing in a bush or you're pulling up to a bush and you think there might be a chance you get spotted, so you need to check it before you go in the bush. Usually you can know pretty quickly whether you're getting spotted. You can see whether enemies turn their turrets towards you. It's still very useful, but I think jamming is is really where it's at. Because jamming, oftentimes you'll be playing a bush line in a light tank. You'll take a shot and then you'll flee. And this reduces the amount of time that you are spotted for. And so for maps like Fisherman's Bay, where you're poking those mid bushes and you have CVS, and uh, you shoot somebody and then you pull into cover, reduces the amount of time you're spotted and then you can peek earlier and then re-spot them again and they'll still be spotted uh, or close to almost still be being still spotted um and i think it makes makes those kind of bush games way better so i think this is mandatory for light tanks and i think for sneaky medium tanks you should also definitely have this so i have it on my batch out here um side by side I would not recommend this tank, this scale for light tanks at all because there's usually only two or three light tanks in a game and you're usually not 50 meters away from each other. It's just not worthwhile taking in a light tank ever in my opinion, especially when you have this skill here, communications expert, which increases your crew efficiency bonus by 2.5% or your reload by 1.1% or your view range by 1.1%. In other words, if the amount of damage you assist exceeds your vehicle's hit points. So if I'm in an EBR which has 1300 hit points and I get 1300 spotting damage, now my crew is boosted by 2.5% and my view range goes up 1.1%, which will give me like four or five, probably five extra view range, which on the EBR is huge. And for light tanks in general, um, I would definitely consider this perk, um, especially low HP light tanks like the, the EBR. 
um, and lower tier light tanks where it's pretty easy to get your hit points and um, assist damage. So for light tanks, I would say situational awareness, jamming, and communications expert is usually going to be the best bet. But there are some considerations, like if you're an LT-432 and you get set on fire very easily, I would go situational, firefighting, and then either jamming or communications expert. It's a hard call. I would probably go with communications expert because it does it has a short reload anyway, so you're not like poking into a bush shooting once and then doing that on repeat. You're usually trying to get find situations where you get to fire continuously because your reload is so short. So that's for an LT-432. For an EBR, I would probably go with with uh, situational communications and jamming and skip firefighting. Now for medium tanks and, and uh, tank destroyers and heavy tanks, I think this is most powerful on heavy tanks probably when you're in a brawl and you're next to other heavy tanks. And in heavy tanks, you don't need these, you don't need these other skills anyway. So for heavy tanks, I'll go situational, side by side, and firefighting. Um, in general, for medium tanks, um, it's more complicated, so I'll save those for later. Um, so heavy tanks are obvious, those three. Um, light tanks, I already explained those. Tank destroyers, so tank destroyers, I would say situational again. Then it's it kind of depends on the tank a little bit. I would say that side by side could potentially be useful if you're in a sniping tank destroyer and you're and you sit by other tank destroyers a lot if that's your kind of your play style where you're sniping in the back with other tank destroyers and you're 4005 then you could get this perk it will improve your accuracy and reload no real reason for this one on tank destroyers this is a light tank only one in my opinion or some medium tanks that are good at spotting like the barask maybe the bat chat although i'm not picking it on the bat chat i don't think it's worth it on most mediums only if you're planning to play for spotting in your medium tank, and it's a good spotting medium tank, should you ever pick that on mediums. Otherwise, it's a light tank exclusive skill. Um, for tank destroyers, situational, and it really depends on the role of of what media of what tank destroyer you're in. So in a badger, I would not pick. I would probably pick firefight. Wait, let's see, firefighting and side by side because you're going to be brawling most of the time, and these other ones, which are relating to spotting, getting spotted, and um, remaining spotted aren't as useful. But like a Grill 15, I would probably pick Situational, again. Grill gets set on fire a lot, so firefighting, and then... Um, probably... I would go with Jamming, to be honest. Um, I think on most tank destroyers, what you're going to end up having to do is usually you're going to be picking situational and firefighting and picking one of these for last, and it's usually going to be between side-by-side -side or jamming. You could also consider signal interception. I haven't tested this one a ton, so I don't know how super strong it is. I did test, this is similar to the Sixth Sense Directive before the, the crew changes, um, where it reduces the time that you've been spotted for. Or you know when you're you know sooner when you get spotted. Um. And by the way, just as a note, I don't think that this is gonna be useful, gonna be the preferred pick on most light tanks, but maybe it will be. It's hard to say. I still think situational jamming and communications is probably gonna be your best bet, yeah, or firefighting if you're in a fire prone light tank. But I still have to test that a bit. But for tank destroyers, um could be useful um, knowing you're getting spotted because sometimes you're playing in bushes and tank destroyers and the light tank will spot you um, and you're not and your tank doesn't have quite good enough camo to know that you're not spotted in a bush so this could potentially be useful yes um, so you could go situational firefighting and signal interception for example in the grill but usually I'm gonna prefer jamming for that so that's all my thoughts on the commander for now not it's one theme that you'll see in this video is that I think the crew skills are much harder to pick now, um, but there still are general themes as to which ones I would pick. So next, let's go to the gunner. Again, Brothers in Arms is a no-brainer for me. Um, if your tank needs concealment or it's got great concealment and you should boost that further, then pick concealment. 
I forego repairs for the reasons I explained earlier because my truck repair time was already under 5 picking repairs on two of my tanks. It's 4 seconds. So if you if you get can get your repair time below 5, um, then you don't necessarily need it on your whole crew unless you're a heavy tank, I think, or a brawling tank destroyer. Um, from here, snapshot is the same. Um, when you turn your turret, your bloom will be less. It's still a very good skill. Deadeye. Deadeye was great before, and it's great now. It's pretty much mandatory on anything that deals damage. I would p pick this on every single tank I play, I think. Even light tanks I pick it on. <clears throat> um, apparently now it works um, for all shell types as well, even HE. So I don't know if there's any implications for that, but I would pick it regardless, um, even if it didn't work for HE. So um, Deadeye is a great skill. Designated target is now combined. It's two skills combined, so it reduces. Designated target now keeps enemies visible for two more seconds if they're inside your firing cone um, when you spot them. And, it, and this is a skill that there's a lot of misinformation about. What I found when testing designated target, at least this is the way it used to work, and I'm pretty sure it still would it still works this way because I haven't seen any listed changes for this perk. When you're pulling up into a bush and you're 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 trying to spot a certain area, your gun, not your not your camera, but your gun needs to be pointed within a certain number of degrees of the spotted tank. For them to be for them to be spotted for two extra seconds. So if you're just looking, let's say you're looking at a 90 degree angle, you're looking over your shoulder, and then you spot someone in front of you, and then you look at them, even though you looked at them, they are not gonna stay spotted for two seconds longer. It needs to be when when you spot them, you need to be looking at them. Which is very tricky. So it, before the before the Crew changes, I mean, it's somewhat useful, but usually it's not worth thinking about, okay, I need to be looking at this area as I pull up, because if I spot someone there, they'll be spotted for two extra seconds. It's just, it's kind of just happenstance whether it works or not, because oftentimes you're looking in another direction with your gun. But the other thing this crew skill does now, it's combined with the crew skill, which I don't remember what it's called, you can look at someone for 0 0.05 seconds, so half a second, and you can see what modules and, and uh, crew members are just, are damaged on their tank. In my opinion, that really isn't very useful at all, um, seeing that someone's rack ammo rack is absolutely helpful, but how often does it actually happen that you're staring at them for that long and that you and that, that will help you out? I mean, I had designated target or whatever crew skill it was um, before, that did this and I didn't find it and I tested it a little bit and I didn't find it being useful very often. You can also see if fuel tanks are damaged um, and they aim for their fuel tank, but usually I'm aiming for the fuel tank anyways if I have a shot on it. So I didn't find that very useful. Um, and there's there's good options now that you can take over this. So in general, I guess if I wanted to shorten everything down, now you know, know how, this, how this works, but in general, I don't think I would take this on any tanks except for um, light tanks maybe potentially light tanks because of the uh, two seconds more visibility. I think that's the stronger aspect of the skill. So potentially useful for light tanks. Here's a new one, concentration. The way this one works is if you sit still for three seconds, your fully aimed accuracy will be improved by 3.5%, which is the same effect that an aiming unit has. Yeah. So an aiming unit will reduce your fully aimed accuracy by 5%. This decreased uh, unboosted standard aiming unit, so this decreases it by three point five percent, which is like two thirds of a of a um, roughly two thirds of a standard aiming unit. So it's pretty powerful, but you do have to sit still for three seconds for it to activate. But still a very strong contender for a crew skill. So I'll talk a little bit about how these are, um, which ones I would pick in a second. But let me go over the rest of them. Quick aiming. Increases turret traverse by 2.5% and your aiming speed, so like a gun lane drive, by 2.5%. So a quarter of a gun lane drive and and uh, makes you turn a little faster, your turret. 
um, Armorer. This one's new, and I, there, I think there's been a lot of false hype about this one. This one um, decreases the RNG of your damage and penetration rolls by 5%. A lot of people think this is nice because they look at it and see, okay, so my new minimum average minimum average damage in my bat chat is, uh, let's let's just look at a different thing. So, um, I'm not even gonna look, but say your your uh, whatever tank does 400 average damage, your S conk does 400 average damage now, or it has 400 average damage. This will make it so your minimum pen roll, instead of it being 300, it'll increase it by 5%. So it will be 315. I believe that's how it works. Um, so yes, you're doing higher average damage at the low rolls, but you're also doing less average damage for your high rolls. So make no mistake, at least in terms of how much damage you're doing, this skill does nothing. It will not help you. It'll make the game less frustrating because you won't get low rolls that... You know, oh, he was a one-shot, and I low-rolled. So yes, it'll make the game less frustrating and more consistent, but this does not offer you any advantage, really. It doesn't increase your, your, your damage per minute or anything. So, I would not recommend Armorer for that reason. The more interesting aspect of Armorer, in my opinion, is the gun dispersion in increase. It gives you 1.5% gun dispersion. Now, I don't entirely know... I think the way that's worded, it's gun dispersion in general, so it's not fully aimed accuracy. That would be broken if it was. Otherwise, you'd just always pick this over concentration. Instead, what it is is when you move your tank, your your reticle blooms. This will make it bloom less, so your less dispersion penalties basically. And I think it's for all just all types of dispersion, probably for moving your tank forwards and backwards, rotating your tank, and rotating your turret, is my guess. But I don't have Someone's going to have to test this in order to see if that's actually the case. Uh, wait a second. Dispersion. Does it say for armor? Hold on. Oh, does this actually improve your fully aimed accuracy? Um, I think it actually does. Okay, hold up. This is This is not what I thought. Gun dispersion. Okay, this says gun dispersion too. Okay, never mind, dude. I think this thing actually does make your full aimed accuracy better. So everything I just said about armor, hold up, hold the, hold the trains, man. This this skill is very good now. Um, if it decreases your full aimed accuracy, not just your bloom while moving, this is actually a very good skill. So that's gonna change my rankings as well. So let's go over rankings now. Um, now that I explained them all. Brothers in Arms, take always. Um, you you don't necessarily have to pick it first. Like if you're in a, I want to make clear if you're if you're playing like a light tank and you have zero skills on your crew, I would pick concealment before Brothers in Arms, and I would potentially pick the view range skills like recon and situation so it's situational awareness before Brothers in Arms, and I would also on heavy tanks pick emergency before Brothers in Arms, but Brothers in Arms is still just a basic skill. It's your top one or two skills, so solid pick. Next, um, let's see, um, keep in mind what I explained about repairs and concealment earlier. If your tank benefits greatly from concealment because it has already has good camo and uses its camo often, pick concealment. Repairs, if you're a heavy tank or any tank in general, try to get your repairs below five seconds. On this tank, I forego, I for, forewent, um, repairs on one of my crew members because my repair, because the batch at base track repair time is already so good. So it's already down to 3.54, even though I don't have repairs on this crew member. Snapshot. Um, let's see. So I pick Brothers in Arms. Then probably one of these or both of these. Um, so for light tanks, I would definitely pick Concealment next or first. And then Heavy Tanks Repairs if you need it. Um, after that, it's a hard choice. Um... I would probably pick Armorer next or Snapshot. So Snapshot is going to be most beneficial on tanks that have poor 
bloom when turning their turret. So FE 4005, this is this one I would pick very quickly. Um, so I'd put Snapshot and Armor roughly on the same same level. Um, but Armor is super nice for tanks that have very poor accuracy, it seems. Um, and it, I would take it on tanks with great accuracy as well, because full aimed accuracy is a very important stat, in my opinion. Man, this makes these picks pretty tough. So, for the bat chat, I would pick Brothers in Arms, Snapshot, Deadeye, Armorer, Camo, and then um, for these last three, I think I would... Knowing that this is boosted, I don't think I would ever pick designated target unless you're a light tank, like I said. Um, I think that armorer is definitely better than quick aiming, unless you're in a tank with very slow turret traverse, like a mouse. Um, or you, even if you have very long aim time, if this decreases gun dispersion then not only does it make your full aim to accuracy better, it will also make your bloom 1.5% better, which is better than having 2.5% better aim time in general, especially because you can fully aim your shot and you'll be more accurate. So I would never pick quick aiming over armor. Um, hopefully you guys have a general idea of what to pick now for this, but um, I want to quickly go over concentration versus quick aiming. So, on the mouse, I would pick quick aiming because you have better turret rotation speed. And on tanks with pretty slow turrets like the Kron and the uh, and the mouse, I think that could be helpful. But concentration, um, I don't think this skill is as powerful as... It's very powerful, don't get me wrong, but 3 seconds is a long time. I've been testing it. And it's pretty hard to get it so that you actually get to use concentration. Because usually I'm just moving for some reason. There's some reason to move um, and to get a better shot because I don't have gun depression and stuff like that. And so I would pick concentration for tanks where you're going to be sniping or where you're going to be cupola sniping and you have a great turret. So so maybe if you're in a... Um, if you're in a... Heavy tank that gets to play hull down a lot, like an IS-7, this could be helpful, or a 279E, so that you can aim for someone else's Capola and you have better full aimed accuracy for that. Just keep in mind, you have to keep moving sometimes to make it so that they can hit your Capolas. But in general, I'd say the worst skills, definitely designated target is the worst, except maybe for light tanks. Although, to be honest, I'm probably going to forego designated target on a lot of my light tanks to pick some of these other ones, especially if they're more, if they have good guns. Um, I might, I might pick it on like the Manticore because it's a very scout heavy, scout um, sided. It's it's very much reliant on scouting, whereas something like um, the new, the new Czech light tanks or um, the Sheridan or the RHM Panzer even, I think I would forego this and go with um, some of these other skills instead. <clears throat> um, but yeah, designated target, probably the worst. Quick aiming, I think, is the next worst. Armorer, great skill. I think it's better than concentration because it, it works at all times. Definitely better than concentration in general. Let's go to... The loader skills, I think, right? Yeah, loader. So the loader skills were slightly reworked. Adrenaline Rush is now more powerful. Before, the way it worked is when you were under 10% of your hit points, you had a 10% better reload. <laughs> now the way it works, if you're under 25% of your hit points, it's a smaller, it gives you 5% better reloading. So the reload time is... Reloading time is not as big of a buff, but it works under 25% of your hit points. Um, so, um, it is a buff overall to this perk, though, definitely, because um, just mathematically it works out that way. Don't don't know I don't have the, quite the right words to explain why that is, but it's it's better now. Um, and I would say it's pretty essential on almost every tank. Let's go. Safe stowage increases ammo rack durability by 
Another thing I should mention, by the way, is if you have two crew members, so that have the same qualification, so two loaders, for example, every single crew skill in the game now, safe stowage included, you need both crew members to have the perk, to have the full effect. So it works the way intuition does now. So intuition, you need, if you have two loaders, you need intuition on both of your loaders to get the full effect of intuition. Um, same for safe stowage now. If you want this 25% increase in your ammo rack durability, you need it on both your loaders. If you only have it on one of them, then it will only give 12.5% durability increase. Safe stowage, I think, was buffed. It used to be like 10% or something, so it's better now. But as you'll see in a second, it's it's not one that I would pick very often unless you have ammo rack problems. Intuition works the same as before. Very strong skill on a lot of tanks, especially if you have good HE shells or if you have good a if you have like AP and heat shells or APCR and heat shells. I um, mean, you need to switch between your gold rounds and standard rounds quickly. Then that's great. This is a new one. Perfect charge increases shell velocity by 10%. Haven't tested this one a ton, but I can imagine that it's definitely helpful for um, slow shell velocity tanks. Um, derp guns, VK7201 might be helpful, but there, there's some really good choices, so it's hard to pick, but I'll go over that later. Close combat decreases gun loading time by 2.5%, so quarter of a gun rammer if you're less than 50 meters away from the enemy vehicle. This one is definitely going to be useful on heavy tanks. I'll tell you that. Um, I'll go into it more later. Ammo tuning. This one, another one that there's going to be a lot of confusion about. When fully trained, increases minimum potential damage and potential penetration by 2%. So I just want to quickly put this in another way or kind of show you what the what the what the general effect of this is so does this help you much um it helps you quite a lot so ammo tuning two percent increase in your minimum potential damage the actual effect of this on your average damage per shot so it actually displays in the garage on my bat chat my average damage per shot because of this skill is 396 so it went up from 396 from 390 and if you do the math on that 396 divided by 390 it's a 1.1.5 percent better um average damage so this skill is extremely strong and you know when i said that this skill is the best right here emergency i might actually be wrong about that ammo tuning might actually be the the strongest skill and so I, I take this on every single tank that does damage. The only tank I would consider not taking this on. I, I actually don't think I can think of a tank I wouldn't take this on. This is a very strong skill. Maybe there is some exception, but if there is an exception, it's going to be a tank that really is reliant on scouting or something. And even then, if you're a scout, like what do these other ones do for scouting for you? Like ELC even 90, I would take this even. doesn't really do anything, so... I guess there is there is a reason maybe not to take this one. If you are in a tank that needs intuition, needs safe stowage, like the like uh, gets amorect all the time, and then maybe maybe you take it because you want it over adrenaline rush, but I think that that's not actually the case. I think even then, even then you would drop. Adrenaline rush for this because this is better than adrenaline rush in my opinion one point one point So this on the batch that I have 1.5 percent extra damage roughly it is rounded so it's not perfect It's not a perfect. It's not telling you the exact effect it has but I've checked and Depending on your crew skill um, This bonus will be increased even more so um, You can check here. It says 2.78% it's boosted a little bit because my crew skill is a little bit higher. And that's because I have vents on this tank in food. So it will literally be the case now that if you have this skill, running food will make you do more average damage per shot, which is kind of crazy. This is also a soft buff for vents. As you can imagine, this worked... This kind of worked before, but now it works for all crew skills. Vents, 
boosts every single crew skill. So, um, well, pretty much all of them anyways. Um, I think there are some that are not, like maybe Adrenaline Rush doesn't get boosted. I can probably check. No, it, it does boost Adrenaline Rush as well. So as you can see, since my crew skill is so high, my gun loading time will be decreased by almost 7% because I, I'm getting boosted by vents. So I think vents as a piece of equipment now is going to be way more popular, especially if you have a very, very experienced crew. Um, I think vents in general is going to be very strong. People are going to be dropping V-Stab for vents on some tanks. Um, maybe dropping low noise for vents on some scouts, potentially. Um, I think low noise on mediums is going to be way less, way less um, common because vents is just going to be a little, it's, it's going to uh, edge, edge a little bit ahead in that respect. But yeah, let's get back to the crew skills. Um, what would I pick on different types of tanks? So I think adrenaline rush, ammo tuning, and intuition is going to be what I pick on probably 90% of tanks. Um, but it is a hard call. Maybe maybe 90% is a bit of an exaggeration. So I think there's kind of four main crew skills that you want to pick. It's between these four. So I, I don't know, man. This this is really this one is very tank specific and really hard to pick because man, it's it's hard to pick, dude. Um, adrenaline rush and ammo tuning I think are solid. Maybe for the third one. I would say don't pick safe stowage ever unless your tank really has a, has an ammo rank problem. So I'll get that one out of the way. This one's probably the worst and the most, well, besides maybe perfect charge. It's, this and perfect charge are probably the ones you'll pick the least often, I guess is how I should state it. Um, perfect charge. I haven't tested this one a ton, so I can't say for sure. But I just think these other options are so strong that unless your tank specifically has really low shell velocity, I wouldn't consider taking it. Could be wrong about that, but I, that's just my initial thoughts. Um, only for derp guns, maybe for artillery, but I'm not. I'm not sure about that. I know Tedster was was talking a little bit about it, and doesn't it doesn't increase the the range that artillerys can shoot? Thankfully, it's still limited. You would thinking if you would think that increasing shell velocity of shells on Artie would increase their range, but it doesn't. Does it increase their arc? I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, but yeah, this one maybe for slow shell velocity tanks, like under 700 meters per second. This one for tanks that get ammo racked a ton. Although really, if you get ammo racked a ton, you can also just run experimental hardening, and then you won't have to run this necessarily so adrenaline rush out pick ammo tuning is probably the best one um next to intuition um intuition the only tanks i would not take intuition on i think are tanks that have bad he shells and only have one type of um standard ammunition or one type of shell that works as its main damaging shell so um, 50B, for example, has AP and APCR, so you, if you're not going to be firing, you're not going to be firing APCR or AP at all, then there's no real reason to have intuition. I mean, it's still helpful, but especially for the 50B, which is an autoloader, it's not useful. I choose to still bring intuition on my bat chat, um, and I, I pick that over some really solid options here, um, just because... I think the the ability to switch between a strong standard shell like APCR, AP, and heat is very important. So I would still pick this on like the Centurion Action X, for example, or the Object 140, uh, stuff like that. And so this is what I pick for those kind of tanks usually. Close combat, it's it's tempting to take this one. Um. But realistically, I think there are not that many situations where you're less than 50 meters away from the enemy, unless you're in a heavy tank, maybe. But even for the T110E5, which has AP and heat, I think I still am going to pick these three and forego close combat. Um, but you could make a case that there are some tanks you should use 
this on, such as maybe the Bliskawitze, the mouse, potentially, because the mouse doesn't need intuition. Um, yeah, that's my general thoughts on these these crew skills. Uh, hopefully you and if you have any questions about which crew skills you should pick on a certain tank, if you're very specific, I might be able to answer most of them in the comments, unless it's just too many for me to answer. And you can also join my Discord and ask me. Um, ask uh, check in the description for my Discord, and you can ask me questions there. Send me screenshots, and I'll tell you what I would pick. Now let's go on to driver skills. Yes, we cover all of this. So driver skills. Another complicated one. I'm telling you, the crew skills, they're tough, man. Um, so Brothers in Arms, good like always. Repairs of art and concealment, I've already explained. Um, and yes, now that I know, now that I know how strong the gunner is because of armorer, I think if there's any any crew member that you're going to drop repairs on, it should be the gunner. The gunner, you should drop repairs and then have repairs on the rest of your crew if you're going to drop repairs. On heavy tanks, I wouldn't recommend doing that, though. Okay, so, driver. Brothers in Arms, super solid. Already talked about these. Pick them if your tank needs them. Um, any new ones. So, clutch braking works the same. Smooth ride works the same. Off-road driving works the same, but a lot of people don't know how it works. Um, your tank has, has these values called terrain resistances. The lower the number, the faster your tank moves on certain terrain types. So there's hard, medium, and soft terrain in World of Tanks. So hard terrain is like roads, paved roads. Medium terrain is grass, grassy areas like the hill on, up on the hill on Westfield. Uh, and soft terrain is pretty rare terrain type. It's uh, like boggy ground or like watery ground. Um, <clears throat> such as in the middle of Live Oaks, there's soft terrain there. It makes you turn really slow. The way off-road driving works, um, you check, um, it reduces your, your terrain re resistance value on medium terrain and soft terrain. So, what they call me moderately soft is medium terrain. So, on, on, uh, grassy maps like Prokhorovka and Malinovka, your tank will be able to drive will accelerate quicker in the forward direction and backwards direction and will also turn quicker so it has kind of the same effect as clutch braking um, on medium terrain and on soft terrain and the way this usually works i'm just going to quickly open up a uh open up a tanks.gg real quick let's pick a tank that has let's pick the is7 And I'll show you the effect that these two crew skills have. They work the same across both patches, I think. So we look at clutch. Let's look at the here's the here are the effective traverse speeds. So there's traverse speeds listed in game, twenty nine point two seconds. But the effective traverse speed changes based on the terrain resistance. So on hard terrain, hard ground, you turn twenty nine point two degrees per second, 21 on medium, 12 on soft. Here's what clutch braking does. It just increases it by 5%. So it goes from 29.2 to 30.8, 21 to 22.2 .2 on medium, and it does the same for soft. So let's compare that to off-road driving. The i7 has terrible ground resistances, so it's a tank that benefits way more from off-road than a lot of other tanks do. Usually a value of one for hard terrain is is okay. One point two is is like is like probably a little bit high for medium terrain. So let's let's say point nine is average for hard terrain. One point two is average for medium terrain, and for soft terrain, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe one point eight or two. But the i7 has high values for all of these. It benefits greatly from off road driving, and so I definitely pick it on pick it for the i7 off road driving. And I'll show you how this works. Um, generally, 
off-road and clutch braking, whether you want to pick it or not, or which one you want to pick over the other, depends on these terrain resistances of your vehicle. And you can look these up on tanks.gg. And I just referenced which values are okay and which are worse. Um, but tanks that have good terrain resistances, like the EBR, don't benefit much at all from off-road and would and uh tanks that turn slowly but have good or tanks that have good train resistances are usually going to benefit more from clutch braking so let's look at this so let's look at medium and hard terrain uh and soft terrain clutch braking brings this value from 21 to 22.25 so 22.25 off-road brings it to 21.6 from 21. So if you look at it, on the i7, off-road driving does not help as much as clutch braking for turning speed. But it still gets a, a good chunk of, uh, of that turning speed. It gets 1.6 compared to 2.25. So it's like two-thirds or so of, of the effect of clutch braking on medium terrain. And on soft terrain... Clutch braking brings it up to 12.9. Off-road actually brings it up to 13.7. So on soft terrain, off-road driving is just always better than clutch braking. So that's enough explanation of those true skills. Um, are these actually good um, is part of the question. So I've, I've talked about these six, I think. Smooth ride, I guess I didn't fully explain. When you're moving your tank um, either forwards or backwards but not when you're turning only when you're moving forwards and backwards the bloom of your gun will decrease slower by four percent so smooth ride i think is kind of a weak skill um it's, it is it is a skill that i can forego and if you look on tanks.gg um i would only pick smooth ride or I, I usually do pick smooth ride, but whether to pick it or not should depend on this value here. So this moving value, if you look, go here and put on smooth ride. As you can see, it decreases this value, um, but it doesn't affect tank traverse. So it doesn't help on tank traverse, which is why I think it's a pretty, for, pretty poor skill. It's only 4%. A V-stab is 20% and it works on all three of these and on after firing. So, so smooth ride is pretty shit of a skill, to be honest. And to be honest, I don't actually know if it's really worth picking on a lot of tanks. I probably would only pick smooth ride if you have really bad on-the-move dispersion values. Now, what values can, are, can you consider very bad? Um, I would say like 0.15 and higher is bad for moving. But if you see that you have like 0.1 or 0 0.10, 0 0.10 um, moving or lower, I would not pick smooth ride probably. So E50M, for example, um, I think probably has like 0 0.12 or 0 0.10. It's actually 0 0.14. That's worse than I thought. Maybe maybe like 0 0.16 and higher is bad, but there are some tanks. Let's look at the T100, for example. T100. The lower the bat, the lower the value, the better it is. The less bloom will be accumulated. The T100 is 0 0.06, which is like the best in the game or something. So I would not pick smooth ride on the T100, for example. Um, but yeah, four percent is a pretty small, pretty small benefit to be honest. Um, let's talk about some of these new crew skills. We got reliable placement. When fully trained, it increases HE shell damage absorption, so it decreases the amount of damage you take from HE by 10%, but this only works for non-penetrations. We just tested this today, and we're pretty sure this only works if they non-pen you. So as if you're if you're taking this, if you're thinking about taking this on like an RHM Panzer, for example, for example, I would think twice because it doesn't actually do anything if they fully pen you. It also decreases falling damage by 30%, so if you crash, you'll take less damage by 30%. Good for EBR races, but in general, I think this is a very bad skill, and I wouldn't pick it even on tanks that are susceptible to taking HE damage usually, um, like lightly armored light tanks. 
I think there are better skills in general. Um, controlled impact, I think, was not changed. Increases ram ramming damage to enemies, decreases the ramming damage to you, and makes your suspension less likely to... Or increases your the damage or decreases the damage done to your suspension when you ram somebody. Engineer is a new one and it's a no brainer in my book on every tank, pretty much. Um, it increases your top forward speed by one kilometer per hour and decreases the penalty of a damage engine. Now keep in mind this is being boosted by your crew skill, so if you have vents or food on. My top speed is actually being increased by 1.4 kilometers per hour on the bat chat instead of just one. So keep that in mind. Another reason to pick vents as a as a piece of equipment this update. Um so what would I pick for these crew skills? Uh let's let's just say for the bat chat. Brothers in arms, I need repairs because I don't have any of my gunner, concealment, because this thing has great concealment values. Um, and then I went with Smooth Ride because I really value the, well, I'd say Engineer first, definitely, because Engineer is better. Engineer I'd probably pick after these three. Um, this is definitely a level th level three or level four perk, I would say. You should pick a third or fourth, most likely on a mouse, so I'd probably pick it third or second even because it has a low top speed. I'd probably pick it over Brothers in Arms even. Um... So after Engineer, I picked Smooth Ride to help with the gun handling. Um, arguably, I shouldn't even pick Smooth Ride, and instead I should pick Controlled Impact or Off-Road Driving. Probably Off-Road Driving. But yeah, I picked Clutch Braking over Off-Road Driving because it was not an easy choice on the bat chat. But if you're ever wondering which one to pick... Um, you can go to tanks.gg and get a rough idea of how much it will help. Keep in mind that off-road driving doesn't just help turning speed, it helps your acceleration as well, and that's kind of the biggest, that's probably just, just as important or maybe even more important than the, than the, um, turning speed you get. So, if you see that off-road driving almost is as good for your turning speed as clutch braking, then definitely pick it over clutch braking because, um... It will also be making you accelerate faster. And so in general, I think off-road driving is probably the better perk to pick. Um, but for, for tanks that really need the turning speed like tank destroyers, sometimes clutch braking will be better. Or for tanks that have good terrain resistances. Um, and I think... Let me check what the batch has terrain resistances are. So the batch jet has fairly low terrain resistances. A little bit low, I think. A little bit lower than average. 0.86 is pretty low, I think. 0.95 is fairly low. 1.5 I think is also relatively low. Could be wrong. It's not like I've read all these out, but I, I have gotten a kind of pattern of what's, what's considered good and what's bad over time. But yeah, you look on the bat chat, clutch braking. Let's look on medium and soft terrain. So 36 goes to 38, goes to plus 2 there, and then for soft terrain is 22 to 24. You're not on soft terrain very often at all, so I'm not too concerned about that. It's mostly medium terrain that you need to worry about. So this goes plus two for medium terrain. For off-road, it goes plus one, um, but it doesn't help on hard terrain either. Re in reality, I think that it's a tough pick on the bat chat which one of these to pick. Probably off-road might be better. Um, but the, but another consideration to, to take when you're choosing off-road driving is does my tank reach its top speed easily? So in a tank like uh, some light tank, light tanks that easily reach their top speed, off-road, once you reach your top speed, is giving you no extra benefit besides your turning speed. Whereas in tanks like the IS-4, which are... Which really struggle to reach their top speed, you're always going to be getting some benefit to your top speed because you're not reaching it on by off-road. Um, so it's good for tanks that don't reach your top speed as well. Um, I'm kind of thinking on the bat chat, I might drop Smooth Ride for off-road. Let me check the bat chat real quick. 
on on this oh no it has really bad moving dispersion or pretty bad 0.17 is pretty bad and by the way if you're wondering for turtraverse for snapshot i think anything above 0.12 is on the worst side and anything below 0.12 for turtraverse is on the good side for for um for snapshot purposes if you're wondering about if you should pick snapshot and i guess that's something you could consider now um snapshot may not be like maybe i should drop snapshot for repairs it's probably not in the batch yet no but on some tanks might be considered might be considering now to drop snapshot and smooth ride nowadays with all these other good perks in the game um for heavy tanks let's go over a heavy tank example i would pick brothers in arms repairs engineer clutch braking probably off-road driving if it's if it's especially a rough a Russian heavy which has very bad train resistances, then you should pick this even before engineer in my opinion. Uh for I7 and I4. So these kind of five. And then you could pick um I would probably never pick this one ever. I think this is the worst crew skill in the game right now. Unless you're doing EBR races. And then Controlled Impact, I've been thinking about it. Uh, it's really hard to justify bringing controlled impact unless you're doing triple IS-7 platoons and then you could drop smooth ride for controlled imp or let's look at the let's see on an I-7 let's pretend I'm on an I-7 um brothers in arms repairs engineer off-road clutch braking I guess you could pick controlled impact instead of smooth ride maybe sometimes on like an I-7 or maybe an E-50M can pick controlled impact instead of smooth ride uh but it's hard to say um, but usually i would say never pick this and then controlled impact i would very rarely pick this one unless you know you're probably going to be ramming people often yeah well i think that's pretty much all i've got i mean we've passed the hour mark i think that's that's an in-depth enough explanation let me just quick show you what i have on a couple of their tanks so i set up my mouse uh this is the order that i picked them in roughly i would probably change this now um i would change this one because now i know how armor works i would definitely pick armor over concentration um and i would even probably pick it over quick aiming so on mouse i'd probably go brothers in arms repairs dead eye well probably armor first then dead eye uh then i think i would pick one two three four five yeah i'd probably pick um quick aiming just for the better church reverse so that i can angle faster and then uh between snapshot and concentration probably snapshot because i find in general that turret traverse dispersion buffs are usually better than other kind of dispersion buffs because usually you're just playing in a kind of set position and then you're just turning your turret and looking around and and you're always trying to you're always turning your turret when you're trying to adjust to shoot a target you're not always moving your hull or turning your hull so in general i think snapshot is much stronger than smooth ride for that reason alone not just because it has a higher percent <clears throat> Um, and I'd probably pick it over concentration, but it's, yeah, I probably would pick snapshot over concentration, but it's not an easy call. Um, and it, in a heavy tank where, um, you don't need the turret traverse speed buff or the aim speed buff as well. Um, some hold down heavy 279, um, 277, something like that. You might want to pick concentration over quick aiming, um, just so you can snipe those cupolas better and take sniper shots. Driver on the mouse. Here's what I picked. Um, as I explained earlier, engineer is great. Radio operator for a heavy tank. Um, for the last one I picked, I'd say the hardest one, hardest choice was uh, whether to pick jamming or signal inter interception as my sixth skill. I'm not entirely sure which one is better for heavy tanks, but that's the general trend of what I picked. Loader, I picked the same for both of my loaders. Um, 
brothers in arms repairs adrenaline rush ammo tuning um this one i think i think these two you could argue i would definitely pick these four and hit on pretty much all heavies intuition you might be surprised i picked it on the mouse because it doesn't have it only has apcr and he i still think that intuition is going to be really nice even if you only have um one 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 main ammo type at least not on auto at least on things that aren't auto loaders um so i still picked intuition debatably should have picked um perfect charge or safe stowage instead um close combat i'm kind of skeptical about this one still i think it might even be worth dropping either intuition or or, or close combat for for perfect charge or safe stowage and maybe mixing these up a little bit but these first four i definitely would pick on both my loaders and you could mix and match you could take one safe stowage on one loader and then uh i wouldn't pick just one intuition probably because then it's kind of pointless it's going to take like three seconds which is kind of in that mid zone to switch to he where it's just not worth it you need intuition on either both or neither um yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I run into ammo rack problems in my mouse. If if I do end up getting ammo rack problems, then maybe I would switch um one or two of the. I would probably switch both my intuitions to either one safe stowage and one perfect charge, or just two safe stowages. Probably just two safe stowages, because this thing has relatively fast APCR at eleven fifty meters per second. Uh, any other tanks? I can give you one more example, maybe. Uh, I got this, this is a light tank, the new light tank, the T-Sec, or the T-Sec line, it's a Skoda T-17, I have a video on this, by the way, it's a very cute little bugger, uh, so this is an example of a light tank, um, what I would pick, and it's a light, it's a light tank with a really good gun, though, so keep that in mind, uh, picked repairs on two of my crew members except one of them i left repairs for last because i didn't think i needed full repairs because my tr my repair time is 5.5 seconds and i'm just gonna get away with that um arguably i should pick repairs on all of them but even for this light tank but i didn't uh recon it's a light tank you definitely want that and then i think these two are not super helpful in light tanks and then it was kind of between uh emergency coordination and mentor and i picked coordination because this is an auto loader it's kind of like a tvp a little bit it does 500 damage burst in like five seconds or something it's tier seven um and since i'm a light tank i figured there'd be a lot of times where i'm going to be lighting an enemy vehicle and then for 15 seconds i have tw i have 12.5 percent better aiming speed which is pretty nice because this thing benefits a lot from that aiming speed because it it's it's a uh, bloom is not fantastic so i picked that before emergency in this case because i'm a light tank i don't expect to be trading health too much especially because i'm a lower tier light tank emergency is an insane skill but if you're in a light tank then maybe you and you're a light tank and you think coordination would be better then maybe you could forego it if you need repairs um if you expect to get shot a lot like in a medium tank then or a lot more than then mentor would be more obvious but even on some light tanks it might be useful but this is what i picked for this tank uh for my radio operator <coughs> excuse me situational awareness i picked communications expert next because this thing only has 900 health and i figured it'd be pretty easy to get that 2.5 percent bonus and then i picked jamming i think these you could argue argue over which one to pick first but that's what i went with i didn't pick firefighting because i have like no health anyways and uh, I don't expect to be trading much in this tank or taking much damage. Especially because it's a low tier and I can outplay people better. On high tier scouts, you still might want to pick firefighting around the LT432. Depends. Probably not, though. You probably want these two. Uh, gunner. Brothers in Arms. Concealment. Deadeye Snapshot. Um because this thing's like a tvp type gun the snapshot helps definitely um i think i might rethink this one though after looking these over armor for full aimed accuracy and i didn't pick designated target as you can see because in this light tank i'm going to be mostly 
I'm gonna there's a lot of times where I'm gonna be doing damage and this 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 one just doesn't happen very often where you're looking at an enemy as as they get spotted. And that's when you have to be looking at them for it to help for when they get spotted for it to apply is what I found for my testing. So I wouldn't pick this except on like a match query or ELC maybe. Uh, yeah, these, maybe, maybe I could pick one of these over, like, Snapshot, but I'm not sure. Um, for the driver, Brothers in Arms, uh, repairs, concealment, uh, not useful, picked, not gonna be ramming people often, it only has 20 hull armor at the front, so I'm not gonna be ramming people, so not useful. Then picked smooth ride, uh, engineer for the top speed definitely in almost like every single light tank I would say. And then I picked clutch braking just because I looked at the values on tank strategy and determined it would be better. I guess, I guess um, I covered a medium, a heavy, and a light tank. Um, I kind of already think I described well enough what I would put in most tank destroyers. But I can just try to speed run. I can quickly speed run the 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 shit pack and show you what I'd pick. So I immediately pick a recon. Um, this tank has pretty good camo. I'm gonna pick camo. What's my track repair time? Twelve seconds. Definitely need to bring that down. So for now, I'll pick it on my commander. It might probably won't take it on my gunner, but we'll see. Uh, not spotting for myself super often in this tank, so I'm thinking just emergency instead of coordination right away. And then for me, it comes down to these two, and how often do I knock out, get crew knocked out in this tank? I'm not sure, but I kind of want the 20% XP bonus anyways, um, so I'll just pick that. Radio operator, situational awareness, um... Don't expect to be getting shot too much, and when I do, I don't think I don't think it gets set on fire super often, so I'm not sure. I'm thinking jamming. Could pick this one because I'm gonna be sniping with my teammates. Could pick this one or this one. Hard hard to say to be honest. Uh, what's how much HP do I have? Eleven fifty. If I get eleven fifty spotting, then I can get a two point five percent bonus. I think that's probably better than side by side. So that will happen more often. Um, I think I'm going to go with this one, but it's hard to say. I would have to test it. Might pick the one on the left instead. Gunner. Brothers in Arms. Deadeye. Armorer. For the better full aimed accuracy. Camo. Uh, check tanks.gg real quick for the snapshot values. It's called the shit pack. The fuck is it called? STRV something. Should let me check. There it is. Um, turret traverse is point zero eight. I probably would prefer to have better full aimed accuracy after three seconds because I'm gonna be sniping. Uh, this thing has poor turret traverse, so I could pick this. It's between these two, I think. I'm gonna leave off leave off repairs for now. Um. Turret traverse speed is 33 per second. I don't actually know if that's that great, but I, in my experience, it seems kind of slow. So I kind of think I'm going to pick this instead of snapshot is my estimation. Driver, brothers in arms, Paris camo. Uh, let's see. So there's a bug where it will say it's 6.5 seconds because it's it when you pick this skill, see it says 10.4 now, or 10 right now. I pick it, it goes down to 6.5. Do not trust this. This is only accurate. It it It's a bug in the game. So it, it thinks that I'm picking repairs for my whole crew. This is 6.5 seconds is what it would be if my loader also has it. But I but if you click train right now, and I don't have it on my loader yet, it goes from 6.5 up to 8.5. So that's not accurate. So once I pick it on my loader, then I'll have full, re then I'll, will be 6.5 seconds. So watch out for that as well. Um. Engineer. Definitely need repairs on at least three crew members though, because this is already pretty high if it's gonna be six point five seconds. Um 
So these four. Um, Off-road driving versus clutch road. Let's see. Uh, its training distances are average, I would say. Just completely average. It reaches its top speed not super easily, but it it's hard to tell because Tank Studge G says your effective top speed is 55. Sometimes on medium terrain, it won't reach its top speed, and it will be like 54 or something, and you'll be able to tell um, that it doesn't reach its top speed. For the shit pack, you can look at power to weight, 22. That's pretty good, um, but I think it'll take a while to reach its top speed. So I'm kind of thinking off-road driving, especially because that is a turret, so it doesn't need clutch braking as necessarily. So I'll probably pick off-road. Um, smooth ride. What is this? Moving dispersion. Okay, value, 0.14. Um, so I'm thinking I will eeny meeny miny mo. Okay, this is while firing on the move. I don't fire on the move very often, so I'm not gonna pick. I'm not gonna pick smooth ride on that one. Mostly, you're just camping and turning your turret to snipe at people. Intuition, I definitely want because it says great HE shields. Repairs, concealment. Um, this kind of sucks because. There's some good skills left over, but I think I have to go with this. So ammo tuning for the 1.1%. It's around 1.1% extra, I think. Or maybe it's 1.4% extra average damage per shot. Um, depends, you know, on your crew level, if they have vents, if they have uh, brothers in arms and food. But it's somewhere in that range, so definitely worth it. Lastly, I'm firing a lot of HE in this tank. And what is the HE shell velocity? Like quite a lot of HE I fire. Shell velocity is 900. I, I could think about doing this because I do notice that the HE is sometimes hard to hit. Um, but adrenaline rush is just so tempting as well. Mmm, that's tough, man. Not this, not this, not useful. Oh, man, this is a tough one, dude. I'm almost thinking perfect charge because I think there's a lot of games where I'm I don't go down to 25% of my hit points until late game because I'm sniping a lot early game anyways and I don't take much damage so I'm gonna try this. But yeah, that's a basic rundown. Went through a tank, went through some tanks for you, what I picked and why. Long ass video, but honestly, the crew skills kind of demand kind of a task like this. So hopefully, this was helpful for helpful for you. I put a lot of work into this video. I know it only seems like I just rambled on screen for an hour or something, but uh, I did I did a lot of testing in order to, uh, or a, not like a lot, lot, but like a decent amount of testing to get you these kind of opinions early on. Um, so hopefully this was helpful for you. Hopefully it helps you set up your crews. Um, please share it with your clan members if they don't know which crew members to pick or which crew skills to pick um, or your friends. Um, thank you very much, um, and I think that's pretty much it, uh, see you guys later, I'll probably be, also check out my video on the new tier 7 light tank, this little, this little guy, it'll be in one of my recently, it'll probably be the last video that I uploaded, the Skoda T17, the cutest tank in the game, check that out if you're interested, I, I think this thing is a great little beast, um, and I'll probably be uploading some other types of videos relating to, um, new things happening this patch like the bat chat um i think the bat chat is extremely strong now after the changes to its gun this patch so stay tuned for that please subscribe thank you all for watching goodbye